Greetings, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation. Gold is uninteresting. For now, let's explore. We have been spoiled uh, with regards to gold over the past um, year and a half, I'll just say, mainly in 2020, really. 2020 was a very exciting year for gold. I'm actually looking at a chart here that shows the tail of the tape with regards to the dollar index and spot gold price. In fact, March, we saw the spikes in opposite directions. The dollar index was way up and gold was way down. Um, and nonetheless, since then, we saw it climb dramatically up to its all-time highs in August of 2020. And the dollar index kept falling to the end of the year. And, and then we saw gold essentially spike back up again to above $1,900 an ounce. Uh, then after that, January of 2021 came. And it's been pretty much downhill ever since, but a fairly steady downhill climb, save for March of that year when the exact opposite happened, although to a lesser degree in March of 2020, in March of 2021, gold dropped to uh, below 6, 1750. It went just above 1700, really flirted with the high 1600s for a while and the dollar index rose in that period of time. And then we saw a mini version of what happened before at around uh, June, May and June of, of uh, 2021, but that was the last time. And then pretty much ever since then, uh, gold has been stabilizing to essentially falling or hanging around somewhere around the $1,800 uh, ounce, uh, $1,800 an ounce level there for a while. So essentially, if you take into account where gold started in 2021 to where it ended, it was kind of the worst year for gold since about 2015. And uh, this, we saw what drove the gold up in 2020, the pandemic. And obviously the pandemic's still with us, but this, there's an article from Bloomberg that talks about this. Stronger U.S. dollar and the threat of a pullback in stimulus by the world's major central banks have deterred many investors who saw better opportunities in surging equity markets. And that is kind of the key here. Excitement booms uh, and bust of Bitcoin, often talented as a digital equivalent to bullion, also captured attention. And, you know, save for the silver squeeze movement, we did see movements to squeeze other stocks like uh, that we saw earlier in 2021. And, of course, other opportunities and altcoins have also provided more excitement. Gold has pretty much been uninteresting in that regard. Uh, gold started the year under pressure, dropping 10% in the first quarter. Vaccine success spurred hopes for a quick recovery from the pandemic. And... Then President Joe Biden's Democrats secured the U.S. Senate opened the door to pro-growth infrastructure programs and more fiscal spending, or aid as they say it here. But nonetheless, that means more QE, quantitative easing, and um, more you know, central planning by government officials. Prices later rebounded after the emergence of new variants and political gridlock in the U.S., but then bullion got stuck in the doldrums. One key factor has been a lack of interest from the financial investors who are crucial to driving gold's rallies. Holdings and exchange-traded funds have dropped almost 9% through the year, while hedge funds trading COMEX futures have kept their bullion bets muted. While the prospect of monetary tightening hurts gold's appeal, prices were supported by strong demand from Asian jewelry consumers and central bank buying. Yes, we did cover that, and I think that is where kind of the excitement is. A lot of these uh, central banks, they see the value of gold, and um, they are adding it because they see kind of what's coming with the dollar in due course. The dollar is 
certainly under threat more today than it was at the beginning of 2021. We'll see how it plays out, but it's very interesting to see. Equilibrium between dip buyers and sellers may not hold for long. More gains in the dollar could spell misery. And so, you know, it's it's interesting to see that and we were kind of spoiled with this high price that we saw spike up again for gold. And ever since then, we've not been able to recapture those highs when many people thought it would surpass and just continue to climb higher. People made that mistake in thinking that, and uh, while others were more cautious, because we've been there before in April of 2011 when it spiked up and then it came back. Signs of persistent runaway inflation, although, could provide the spark needed for a sustainable gold rally. As one of my commenters said on one of my videos, usually gold's rise comes and the rear end, comes at the rear end of inflation. So that is something we just need to be patient for. BlackRock Incorporated's Evie Embrambro said earlier that gold could climb in 2022, driven by a combination of real interest rates, U.S. dollar performance, and demand for haven assets. That is something that very realistically could be possible. And as I mentioned in a prior video, J.P. Morgan sees gold coming under more pressure as global econo economic recovery continues, forecasting an average price of $1,631 an ounce for next year. I kind of doubt that's going to happen. Um, although I'm going to, you know, I'm going to eventually be talking about what my prediction is going to be for 2022. Um, but um, I don't think it's going to be much lower if it is lower. We'll find out. I just have to think about what I'm going to uh, predict. We'll see. But uh, the thing is, the predictions, as I mentioned in other videos, should only be taken for a grain of salt. And so we saw, surprisingly, the last couple of days of 2021, gold rise up to almost eight, 1830, um, $1,830 an ounce. And um, so therefore, it has to wonder where it's going to go from here as we begin 2022. Now, uh, keep in mind, I'm recording this video before the markets actually open, but uh, the message is still the same uh, because gold is uninteresting for now. Uh, what could happen um, in the next couple of hours um, or at the time that you see this video? Gold, I believe, will make a decided move one way or the other, not by much, but we'll see movement probably in the prices. Uh, the price of gold surged during the holidays from around the $1,800 psychological level into the 1830 area, which would uh, be expected to as, as, as act as a resistance on initial tests. And so we have this is something that we have to see. Technical analysis comes into play here, uh, especially with regards to where it's going to move um, in the coming hours or day. Um, you know, we, if we could see it go up to 1830 and test that level, could go to 1850. And then on the contrary, if we see it fall below, uh, it will test levels at $1,820. And so, and before going to 1805, uh, which would be a slip downwards, um, and I'm of the feeling that um, uh, it will be in uninteresting uh, if we hover around anywhere between 1850 and 1750 in the coming months. I believe that's going to be an area, especially the prices move kind of slowly here and there. Gold just going to kind of settle, and people are going to be kind of eh, not all that excited about where it's going. Um, and so I believe it's during these times that, uh, you know, we just kind of wait it out and see what's going to happen. Well, we know from a prior um, research that looks like May is going to be where they are going to begin testing uh, these rate hikes. And it will likely be a, a quarter of a percentage point, very small, to see how the market reacts to um, those rate hikes. Will it stave off inflation? I don't know. Many people feel that it won't do any good. Some people think that they wouldn't dare raise rates because if they were to raise rates, it's going to cause a lot more issues with the economy and with inflation. And their hands are tied. 
And some people feel it's inevitable. So those are conditions where I believe you're going to see gold really shine. And uh, potentially, especially if we see uh, inflation react pretty much to the opposite of what the Fed does, um, anything negative after what the Fed raises rates, I believe will prove to be very bullish for gold. And I believe that it will probably be the time when we start to see it move upwards. And of course, if gold moves decidedly in one direction, silver will move probably at a quicker pace and at a higher rate than gold will. So stay tuned. I believe this year is going to be a decided year one way or the other for gold. Um, if gold does a uh, fall, uh, as J.P. Morgan predicts, then it will remain uninteresting. Uh, but I believe it, it, it's going to, um, if it falls like um, J.P. Morgan suggests in their prediction, then it won't be uninteresting. It'll be interesting, but it'll be very disappointing. It'll be interesting to see it fall. And for me, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if it does fall fairly dramatically, uh, they say even it could fall below $1,500 is what at some points during the year is what the J.P. Morgan suggests, then that provides a good buying opportunity as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, But uh, nonetheless, if it keeps going up from here, it will obviously be very interesting to track, so we'll see how it plays out. Nonetheless, uh, what is the lesson here? To me, it's not about being interesting or not. Gold is what it is and always will be of what it is, and that is a hedge against economic instability. Whether or not you see it as such within any given year or month or day or weeks, um, over the course of time, gold will preserve its, uh, its value as that inflation hedge. It is the ultimate store of value, I believe, um, for what it is. It doesn't pay dividends, um, and it exists only because of its history. Um, as a store of value um, and it's a monetary metal as recognized by the Bank of International Settlements um, and from what I understand um, January 1 was supposed to be the time that the full implementation of Basel III Accords for British and European banks it looks like it's going to be postponed another year um, and so who knows how that will translate um, uh, with prices my guess is that it will probably mean that they're going to remain um, subdued, at least from that regard. We'll see. We'll find out. And nonetheless, it'll be very fascinating to see where gold heads this coming week and, um, and find out if it will remain uninteresting uh, as opposed to other investment vehicles out there. But again, gold is not an investment. It is a hedge. It is a wealth preservation device. So I believe that's how it should be viewed. So there you go. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.